I usually spend the winter, the summer in a sleeping bag and I move in to uh, different places during the uh, winter. I've done at least 15 years in and out of penitentiary. I, I've never been to a program before. I'm a cook, I love to cook. I need a bigger room, that's what I'm saying. We've always known that give an opportunity to do something good instead of something bad, a lot of the smart folks will take that opportunity, but we had to prove it. And for over 25 years, we've had men and women doing positive things. We do get pigeonholed. I mean, there for years uh, with my good buddy, buddy Rod Luck over at KUSI, you know, every month we were on TV with our Take Back the Streets program, you know. We had our people out there, we're tearing down crack houses, you know, and we're building uh, little houses on the properties and we're cleaning up neighborhoods and removing graffiti and all those type of things. And so people thought for a long time that we were just a work program. And then probably the last five, six, seven years, maybe 10 years, you know, we're identified with the Neil Good Day Center downtown because we operate that and then obviously the Winter Shelter Program, which is a big deal during the holidays, when in fact we've got 14 programs in seven different cities. We've got uh, 270 units of housing for families with over 300 children. We've got 200 units uh, downtown San Diego for the m mostly mentally ill. We have senior transportation programs where you know you see a big old gang member driving around a van, a handicapped van with some little old ladies in the back, you know, taking them to the store, taking them to the uh, to their doctor's appointments, you know. We're the largest employer in the history of San Diego as far as gang members. We have the largest treatment facility in the county of Acosta Most people don't even know that. It's a state licensed, state certified facility, all run by former drug addicts. We have 92 units of housing for senior citizens up in Escondido. We've got 240 units in Sierra Woods up in Riverside. We just opened a place in Oakland right now. The blessing is that we've had 120 days you know, to transition seven or 800 people through here um, into supportive housing and, and boarding cares and, uh, you know, treatment programs, um, permanent housing programs. Some people go back to the streets. We've had, uh, I think overall, about 22 uh, young ladies in here carrying babies. All these folks here are, have access to mental health services, medical services, and these type of things. Patrick's the official hugger. I love to hug. I love to hug. Hugs, not thugs. Back then. He was out there 15, he was a 15 years? 12 14? years. 12 years. You know where the Midway is? Drink I had up. a million dollar view and I didn't have to pay for it. One of his camp buddies brought him in and he literally slept for like a couple of weeks yeah. and nursed him back to health over a few months. I still have Harbor Police come by up there at the Nugget Day Center and they go, see, I told you he was still alive. But I should be dead. By all rights, I should be dead right now. It's all about giving back, you know, and uh, I've known these people for a long time, and if, if I can do it, they can do it. Many times we take what we have for granted, and, uh, you know, these people cherish just being here and being safe. People live 18 inches apart from each other on a three by seven foot cot. All their belongings are on those beds, and, uh, you know, that's all they have in the world and they appreciate it and they're thankful for it. Somebody asked me the other day, what dynamic is, is, is changing uh, over the last four or five years you've seen, Bob, and it's, it's the senior citizens, it's the disabled senior citizens, it's those who are simply poor, not traditional homeless people, you know, that have a drug, alco a drug or alcohol issue or mental health issue. These are folks that are, you know, they get uh, Social Security in their 80s. Yeah, this is the Hotel Metro. That's 193 units of very low income housing. Um, we'll tra we transition about 40 or 50 people from the winter shelter here every year. It's the last of the traditional SRO, single, single room occupancy apartments, which are about the size. I think they're eight by six foot by eight foot. Most people's bathrooms are bigger than these. These are the poorest of the poor to live this. This is the cheapest, the lowest rent um, SRO or housing unit in downtown San Diego. It's a step up from the shelter, obviously, because you have independence and you have privacy and these type of things, except when you have to go to the bathroom because the bathrooms are all down the hall. But you know, the, the folks that, that, that come through our programs, come up off the streets, come out of our treatment facilities, deserve better. You know, and the well, here's the key right here. 
the key to it is, if you have your own key, you're not homeless anymore. And then gratitude, I'm grateful for this place right here. You know, I used to be on the curb, now I'm four floors above it. You know, it's all about gratitude. And you got your own key. Come in and go as you please. Yep. I need a bigger room. That's what I'm saying. I love it here, though. To get good staff, good staff people here. I'm trying to get a bigger room so I can cook more. I'm a cook. I love to cook. I'm an ex-marine. If you live here, you can't get respect to get respect. My name is Paul Brown, okay? And I'm 75 years old. I tried to remember this place from years ago, and I walked it down a block, and there it was, you know, uh, $446 a month. Uh, a month or so ago, they let me know that my rent was going to be dropped to $330 because I qualified. And I thought that was just great. You can't beat the rent here. Okay? Uh, believe me, you can't. And people are pretty nice. Many of those folks transitioned out of the winter shelter program or trapped in some form of mental illness. And if they live there in peace and dignity, next to the, the brand new sparkling places that have gentrified into the East Village now, new condos and stuff, and they live with respect for each other and the neighborhood in which they live in. This was the infamous Tweaker Hill about 21 years ago, the Grand Vista Inn. In fact, a lot of guys that, uh, that are now case managers here used to buy all their drugs. So there was killings up here. This was the hub of, of really a Drug Central uh, in Vista and really the county for, for years and years and years. The city of Vista, I guess, was so desperate to change this and asked us to decide our treatment program over here. So it's a tough program. These guys start their morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they go out and uh, hawk newspapers for six hours till 11 o'clock. They come back in, they have lunch, and then they start their day. Frame it for recovery, journaling, NA programs, on-site, off-site, until about 9.30 at night. It's six days a week uh, for about uh, six or eight months, ten months, some people take longer. But whatever, we build a custom-made plan for each uh, man uh, that's here, uh, a case management plan, and make sure they're successful. I got out the van and the handcuffs and the paper suit. First time I stepped foot on ground, but they keep telling me that I was not locked up. Just because you're free that you're still not locked up up here. You know what I'm saying? Because I have been a lot of years. And I hurt and I ached, I pained, but I stayed here. Today I have some tools in my toolbox. You know what I'm saying? Funk house. You know, I know how to befriend someone. I know how to, to, to aid and assist someone. I know I'm blessed because I fell here, Casa Raphael. You know? And there's a lot of people that, that, that feels the same way. I mean, this is truly what it means, where miracles happen. Our goal was always to buy this facility because, you know, one of our, the hardest obstacles that our graduates have is finding a you know, sober place to live. And there aren't really many places like that. And, you know, obviously to have one right across the parking lot would just be a dream. The minor intervention, I guess, that we ended up buying the facility. So we've got about 60% full of our grads now. Definitely beneficial for, for Casa Rafael graduates who uh, complete the program across the way just to be able to be so close to access the support system that we can provide for them. They also go into aftercare, which is a six-month program after they graduate. They continue to come around, give back to the guys who are still in the program. Also, it's really easy for the guys to get in here. They're, they're really light on the credit checks because a lot of our guys uh, have bad credit histories, um, you know, for the damage that they've done uh, through their addiction. So they let them basically come in here without a credit check. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's just a great thing for our guys to have. It's a, it's a dream come true for us. I mean, right across the parking lot, if they ever have any need or they feel those, that little demon on their shoulder saying, man, I don't want to use today, I want to give up today, they can walk right across the parking lot or make a phone call and we're there. We've always given opportunities to gang members slash convicts slash drug addicts. But about three years ago when we started uh, the winter shelter downtown, we hired a bunch of gangers from the neighborhood. There's Crips, it's a Blood, some uh, Lamita 70s, some of these guys. Brought them all together. We hired like, like 35 right off the top. And so like, we're going to charge you with the responsibility of making sure this neighborhood's safe. We're going to give you an opportunity to be good guys instead of bad guys, to shine the spotlight on you with the police department, the neighborhood, the media, and whoever, anybody else that wants to take a look at you. So, hey, you guys get an opportunity to do something good, you will do it. Just all the gang members that are my co-workers that we do, you know, we're all from 
different neighborhoods and everywhere, you know, Bloods and Crips and a lot of different Mexican gang members too. So we all, you know, work together and um, put everything in the street stuff to the side, you know, and just so that we can, you know, have a good working environment, you know. The challenge was uh, to convince the neighborhood uh, that we're moving into that, you know, we're truly going to be a safer place to be. Immediately, crime went away in the neighborhood. The guys that we had the detail down there, we call them our security guys, the orange shirts, um, won an award from the police department, recognitions from the same police officers that used to arrest them. We, last year, we started a little gang um, program that we're doing um, with the kids. So we go to some schools, start talking to them. We're going to try to get a little facilities, what we're trying to do, and we can bring the kids so we can talk to them and work with them more. A lot of staff, the vice principals that deal with the kids in the local Logan uh, schools, um, said, hey, can you guys come talk to our kids? Because we've got a lot of kids that are struggling right now with, uh, their, you know, they go home in the neighborhoods and they're being pressured to be involved in gang activity and tagging and things like that. Can you come talk to them? So we talked to three or four schools and one of them was off the hook when we went in the auditorium. There was probably 60 or 70 kids and it was, I mean, it was, you know, these, these kids are out there. I mean, the, the teachers, back in my day, if you acted like that, there was consequences. But anyways, once our guys started talking to them, we had five or six of our uh, uh, gang members talk to these kids, and the whole uh, atmosphere just relaxed. And these kids were dialing and talking to our, our guys. What's up? Pee Wee, let me the village, 7-0 gang right here. What's up with it? We have a project right now that's that's in the planning stages. It's 64 units of family housing that we're going to have up in Ramona. And we'll have enhanced services built around uh, that facility so that these moms and dads can raise their kids in a healthy, nurturing environment. We're going to also deal with their ancillary issues that they have, uh, help them find jobs and get them transportation, education, job training. So a couple of years ago, I got a phone call from an old friend of mine, uh, Jimmy France, uh, and he wanted me to talk to his wife, uh, Jody. It's her and Jimmy had recently lost their son to heroin, which is a byproduct of the, you know, the OxyContin addiction that's taking place all over the United States. We had a meeting with the Oxy Task Force here in town here with some great you know, plans to do uh, some treatment facilities for just these youngsters. Because kids are dying uh, you know, every, every week around San Diego County, it's a real uh, problem. Uh, obviously it's horrific for the families that don't you know, have to experience it. We've worked with Jody for, like I said, a couple of years now. We've got some beds set aside up at uh, Casa Rafael, 10 beds dedicated for what we call oxy beds. We're ready to you know, get after it right now. My vision is to have a, a shopping mall somewhere or a small little strip mall somewhere that has a car wash, that has a true boys and girls club with arcades, classrooms for kids to, to be able to work side by side with our the guys that are from those neighborhoods. A little studio there, we talked about it with some of the kids in the school. They have aspirations to do that kind of stuff. A place for them to go and work with our guys and generate an income. If, you're, if you don't have a paycheck, you can't take care of your family or yourself, so you gotta go out and do other things. So it's that paycheck. So we wanna have our own businesses so we can generate income to pay our people to do good things. And we're not looking for the government to pay for it. We're not looking for you know, taxpayers to pay for it, anything like that. Something we can get off the ground that they can generate their own income and their own opportunities and expand on that. We had a major hope that was just dashed here recently. As I said, the Metro, we have 200 units for a supportive housing for the mentally ill downtown. These are very, very, very low income people. And I got to tell them about a year and a half ago that we were actually gonna build a new Metro with in-room bathrooms, little studio type apartments with retail on the ground, with a communal kitchen for everybody, you know, make meals for them and stuff. And then I had to go back and tell them about six months ago that that wasn't gonna happen. We were scheduled to build a new Metro um, with redevelopment dollars. We've been working five years with CCDC to do that. We actually secured the lot up the street and market in uh, between 13th and 14th to build 230 new units. For our folks who have lived here, some of these folks have been here 15, 16, 17 years waiting, you know, for something better. But we all know what happened, the redevelopment dollars, uh, you know, were taken by the state and now we're in kind of in a bind. I mean, the building physically can't, you know, stand much longer. My dream was for a long time to have those 230 units of new housing for these folks who deserve it. My faith says, you know, to, to use your gifts and talents to help somebody else out. And, I, and nobody's ever accused me of being smart, okay? I certainly don't have all the answers. I mean, I know a lot of people here, you know, that can, that can help us realize some of these 
visions or some of these plans or some of these ideas that we have down the road that can help us showcase our men and women who are out there working every day and empowering those people to do great things in their own lives but also in the community. We're the only group over the last 25 years that put people out there in the streets working every day. You know, cleaning up somebody else's neighborhood that God willing someday our folks will be able to live in, in their own home. You know, empowering people, empowering people. You get something back. If you support us, you're gonna get a return on that investment.